it was a complete, in my opinion, let me put that out there. In my opinion, the fireside chat from Poshmark was a complete dumpster show disaster. Let's thank the sponsor of our channel in today's video, List Perfectly, the best and fastest cross listing tool for resellers. They'll help you get your inventory in front of 12 platforms in just minutes, including eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Shopify, Macari, Facebook Marketplace, and many others. Thank List Perfectly for the time and effort they've put into bringing you this amazing tool. Save 30% on your first month or upgrading a month with List Perfectly using discount code ROCKSTARLP. I'll put it down in the description box. They do an amazing job. They have an amazing team, and we want to thank List Perfectly for being a sponsor of the Rockstar Flipper YouTube channel. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome in, and wow, we need to talk about the Poshmark Fireside Chat. Who comes up with this stuff? Like, people in Millennial Z generation think that these buzzwords make us get all excited and i'm in that generation millennial whatever so i can say that but it was a complete in my opinion let me put that out there in my opinion the fireside chat from poshmark was a complete dumpster show disaster so let's just jump right into it and admittedly uh i did not watch it live but thank you to the person that uh, so graciously recorded it and sent me over the file to let me watch it Whew, from their point of view, it was horrible. So I don't know how many people down in the comment section agree that Poshmark's fireside chat was probably the biggest disaster in a long time. Let's just jump into it, guys. Okay, so basically what they did on this fireside chat that was uh, for Poshmark ambassadors, I am an ambassador, but I didn't watch it, uh, was to address the struggling sales. I guess that's a good word, struggling sales, Pfft, non-existent sales. Anyways, on the, plat on the pa uh, Poshmark platform, and all of the uh, recent issues with the algorithm and the search. Uh, so four quick points. I'll make them uh, as fast as I can, and then you guys can use the comment section to let me know what you think. As always, that belongs to each and every one of you. Uh, point number one, um, basically they separated sellers into two groups, sort of. They took a group of sellers and they put them into a new algorithm experiment i think that's the word they used if i remember right uh a new way to get search results and algorithms and they took some of those sellers and they put them over there and the other people kind of just got left behind and their sales got crushed now it was an interesting play on words which i caught and i saw someone else caught it on a reddit forum post they said there was an increase in sales of sellers not an overall increase in sales platform wide. And so what I take that to mean is a lot of the people that they took to try in this new algorithm experiment were sellers who didn't sell anything or sold very, very little. And so all of a sudden people that had no sales were getting some sales and all the people that were normally consistent sellers got crushed. So it doesn't mean it was overall good. It just means they were able, and this is just my guess. I don't know, maybe Posh could have elaborated on it, if they hadn't ended the topic 20 minutes early or 10 minutes early to not answer questions. So that's point number two. They actually ended that chat early to avoid answering questions. And one of the moderators or executives even said, oh my God, we have too many questions. It's overwhelming. We're gonna end this bye-bye. Like what, what? I, you guys give eBay as much grief as you want, but they have never done that. That's insanity. Point number two, way to go, Posh. Okay, um, so yeah, basically this experiment was just a complete disaster show. You don't experiment with half of your audience. If you wanna roll out a new feature and see if it works, give it out to everyone. Let's see what happens, right? That's not how you go about business. That's bad, bad business. Um, number three point, uh, they finally admit that white backgrounds are good for Google searches. Now, I'm gonna say something that's gonna be an unpopular opinion, uh, controversial and Poshmark will probably yell at me, fine, so be it. Uh, white backgrounds are good for Google searches. It's a proven fact. Google crawls an item, and if you have a dress laid out on a plain white background, and you can use an app called Photo Room. I'll link it below, or you can download Photo Room. You can use the free version. You don't need to pay for that premium version. It's nice to have if you pay for the premium, but the free version works great. Anyways, if you have a dress or whatever your item on a white background, Google can grab that item. If you've got a little flower pot and a shelf and a tray and your name and all this stuff on it, Google has more problems trying to identify what the item is, right? Especially in the Google uh, lens sense, if somebody's like lens picking it. So that is something to keep in mind. It's been true, it's been proven. Uh, 
across Amazon. Amazon requires a white black, a background. You cannot even list your item if it's got anything besides a white background. eBay has almost all gone to that. You can list without the white background, but they highly encourage it because of obvious reasons. Posh is finally admitting this, even though everyone told him this years ago, and they were encouraging people to doll it up and make it look all fancy and curated. Stop. You're, you're selling an item, not a not a Abercrombie magazine, right? God, geez, I don't know what took them so long. Point number three, white backgrounds. Use Photo Room. Again, I'll link it below, or you can just download the app. It's completely free, uh, and they do have a premium version, which is amazing. does bulk editing of photos and white backgrounds, and it's a great app. So just check it out. The guy that made it uh, from France, uh, Matt, Mateo, whatever he goes by, awesome dude. Love you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, and then point number four for this entire thing about Poshmark, and I made the video yesterday, is... Posh, and this is the part where they're going to be probably angry at me. Posh got really high in Google rankings. For a long time, uh, I would search my items and I would have them on eBay and on Poshmark and they would show up, um, the Posh result would show up higher than the eBay result, even though I had white backgrounds, same title, same everything. I would even price them the same. It didn't matter. And it's because of the engagement. Posh's platform was built on that sharing tool. The sharing tool was advertised as a way for you to share your items to get it higher in order to have a better chance to make a sale, which is true. But if you don't think for a second that thousands of people clicking that share button thousands of times a day, millions of clicks a day, doesn't push that up in rankings, because Google's going to go, holy crap, Posh has got hundreds of thousands of clicks and engagement going on and sharing. It's nuts. Push them up. That is what that platform was built on and why it became successful. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing illegal. Nothing bad. It, it was just their game plan. And that was what they built on. And that's how it got there. So, um, with that being said, putting in white backgrounds and doing all this other stuff is absolutely necessary because people want to see what they're buying. People are interested. They don't. Some of that busy. Some people have like lines, colored lines as backgrounds. It's too busy for people's eyes. So plain white backgrounds, highly recommend it. If you're going to stick with Posh, man, you're just going to have to roll with whatever they do. It's their sandbox. But my overall uh, advice for you is please get on eBay. Cross list. We get a bad rap as YouTube people because uh, viewers and haters and criticists are just like, well, you guys are just trying to get views on your YouTube channel and your videos, or you're trying to push an affiliate uh, product link for a cross-listing tool. That's all true. I'm trying to get views on YouTube. That's why I'm on YouTube. And I'm trying to get paid by List Perfectly or any other tools that I give you guys because that's part of my income and that's affiliates. 100% full transparency. Everyone knows that. But we practice what we preach. I don't sell on one platform. I sell on three or four platforms now. And there's a reason because if one goes to haywire like Posh is, you gotta have other platforms. So we're not just doing it to get paid. Yes, that is a perk of the job, it's great, but we really truly mean that you have to diversify and not have all your eggs in one basket for this exact reason. The other reason is eBay has an audience that dwarfs Poshmark. It is huge compared to Poshmark. And if you list the exact same items on Posh as you do on eBay, vice versa, and you price them and describe them and have good listings and everything is almost the same or identical, eBay will outsell Posh every time, every single day of the week, no matter what. There are a few exceptions. But for most of you selling the normal type clothing, uh, you know, normal type of fashion or shoes or whatever it is, eBay will outsell Posh if you're doing it correctly and have the right policies and procedures and shipping and offers and all that sort of stuff. It will outsell Posh. No two ways about it. And not to mention electronics and other stuff, toys, games, stuff you can put on eBay that you can't sell on Posh or that you've just recently been able to sell on Posh, but they still don't sell that great because Posh is known as a fashion app, not a board game app, right? So that's my opinions. That's my thoughts on that little fireside chat buzzwords. If anything, it made it worse. It made people more angry to hear the actual explanation. I sort of could have guessed that that's what they were doing. Never to that level. I would have assumed that they were messing with the algorithm and trying and experimenting with different things. I didn't think they would actually separate it into groups. Wow, what a bad, bad decision in my opinion. Anyways, that's it. That's uh, that's what I got for you on the Poshmark uh, 
show that wasn't <laughs> leave the comments below let me hear what you guys have to say enjoy your weekend it's friday guys go out get dinner uh grab a drink relax uh spend some time with the family and uh i appreciate you guys watching and being here with me on a friday afternoon hit that like button make sure you turn that blue thumb blue because it means a lot to me and it helps my algorithm speaking of get this video out to more people so they can see and learn and fix their uh their business their sales their money their whole livelihood right and subscribe to the channel you'll get more videos like this you'll get notified and you won't miss any upcoming news notes and anything else in the world of reselling and business. Thank you guys so very much. Check out the links below and I'll see you next time.